So you can see here, there's a bit of ground in between the two plots that's not been used. Craig will be going about 1.6 kilometers an hour. John making a lovely job of tidying up the grass. That's what you get left with your little ridge. So that's what these ridges are. I stand out of the way in case it throws a stone at me. And the plants are in the background, look at that. Right guys, morning. Welcome back to another video. Very, very different today, something you've never seen us do. We've got a Miscanthus planter here. Craig's in the 130, Nick's on the back with three of the guys that have brought the machine down. Um, and they're away planting Miscanthus. The second day we've been planting, um, we've got two different companies that have supplied rhizomes, which is the um, part of uh, uh, Miscanthus that you plant. And so we did one lot, it was actually last week, and that's been rolled, that's been drilled and rolled. And then this stuff's been drilled today. It's all part of a new project that started here called Biomass Connect. Um, which Nick, who is in the high vis on the back of the planter, is looking after on behalf of um, Northwick or Rothamsted. And there's all sorts going on. So we've got Miscanthus here. Where I'm stood now, where the Manitou is parked, is going into Willow, I believe. There's some trees, I'll take you up there in a minute, that have already been planted, some poplars up there. There's some more Miscanthus on platform over there. There's a cultivated piece of ground here that was supposed to go into grass, but because we had such a wet spring, it never got there. Um, so that'll either go in now in the autumn or wait now till next spring. John's up here doing the topping. He's tidying the place up. I'm waiting here with a bag of rhizomes for when the guys run out. For anyone that's not ever seen a rhizome, that is what they look like. Looks like a piece of bamboo or something like that. But uh, yeah, so that is what grows into Miscanthus or elephant grass. That stuff grows somewhere up towards about three meters tall and uh, can be then cut, harvested and used for um, burning in power stations to create energy. Yeah, that's what's going on. I'll get some footage of the plant when it comes back up here in a minute. I've got some footage of the planting that we did last week. So I'll, uh, I'll put that back in now so you can uh, you can check that out and then we'll flip back to this. Probably add this into a video somewhere at some point. Something quite interesting going on on the farm today. We're actually planting Miscanthus. Not something I've ever been involved in before and not sort of your everyday kind of thing. So behind me, there is a planter. It's on my tractor. Phil's driving at the moment, Dr. Phil. Um, swapped roles. But yes, yeah, so we got some trial plots of Miscanthus going in here. I think there's also going to be miscanthus on that ground there that's ploughed and just been overwintered. Um, but today we're just doing this area here that's been power harrowed. So Phil power harrowed this this morning. Um, this is quite heavy ground here, but because it's quite dry and it's been overwintered and sort of worked down or weathered down, it power harrowed up absolutely beautiful. I can bury my foot in the dust. Really, really fine soil, which... Um, now I have no idea if that's good or not for Miscanthus, but that's what it is. Look at that. It goes against the sort of things we want to do you now with the arable crops where we want to retain all the soil structure, but I mean, this is what you've got to do to plant this stuff, so. It looks exactly like potato rows, and I think the planter is pretty much the same principle. We'll get a shot of that when it comes back in a minute. So it, um, so the guys on the back are dropping a rhizome onto a um, flap in the back of their planter in the middle of the row and then it gets shrouded over with soil from both sides. So Phil's just turning around at the other end. We'll get a bit of footage of them coming past in a minute. Craig's going to come up with big boots after he's had his dinner and uh, actually Cambridge roll this. The guys that are on the uh, back of the planter, they asked if we could roll it flat after we've... Um, after we finish, so Craig's gonna bring up the rollers and do that. It's a pretty steady process, so the tractor's set at 1.9 kilometers an hour. The beauty of doing it on my tractor is that we've got the auto steer, so perfect three meter bouts every time. There's the dock, there's a nice air conditioned cab.
you gonna press one button. I, I didn't push it off. <laughs> 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 They're, apparently, you just chuck them on the floor and they grow, so... Yeah. Yeah. That'll be fine. That's a hell of a job, that topper. Doesn't even all this stuff is laid down, we've been driven on, look. Just mulches it to nothing. And it smells awesome. So you can see here, there's a bit of ground in between the two plots that's not been used. So this is one lot here that's been rolled down. A bit of power harrow ground here. And then this stuff that they're drilling today, it just ridges it up like potato ridges. And then in here somewhere, or in amongst, there will be, there'll be some rhizomes. It's still a fair bit of moisture in the ground, considering how dry it's been. But, um, we're just saying to the guys there when we filled up the planter that this is probably the wettest, wettest field on the farm. So it's probably the best one to put this sort of project into. But uh, we'll go down there and see how the machine works. Right, I'm going to get some footage of the planter as it comes past here. It's a very, very simple machine. It's land driven, so there's a set of wheels on the back with a chain. Um, to a couple of little pots that spin round, they put the rhizomes in and they fall down systematically to the floor. What happens is there's a set of legs that make a groove. Let's say they make a groove like that. The rhizome then falls into that groove and then there's a set of closing wheels that come along and push that groove back over and fill it with soil and that's what you get left with your little ridge. So that's what these ridges are. Got the rollers up here. We'll come along and flat roll it all and so it is all level. And then it'll be exactly the same as the plot next door. I've never done anything with potatoes, but I essentially, I believe it's a potato planter. They've got a big bunker on the top with just bulk rhizomes in. So they've got to be fairly quick at being able to sort them because they're all tangled up and place them into a bowl in front of them. that has got four um, sections in it, put a rhizome in each section. And as the wheels turn, they spin and then one will fall down the gap where they want to plant it. It's got a manual belt marker on the outside. Craig's got to drive along extremely slow and also in a straight line. It's marking a belt, but his belt line must nearly be drying up. As we're going along, you can just about see it there.
So there is a rhizome that didn't quite get buried, so I'll do my bit for the team. I'll bury that one down. They're very, very vigorous at growing, and once they start, you can't stop them apparently, so hopefully it's all going well. John's turned up again with the top, we've got another little stick to do along here. A lot of what Nick will be doing looking after this going forward will be hosting various people to come and look round it all. Obviously once it's up and going, so we've got to make it look nice. And also, by topping it now, it'll make it a hell of a lot easier for him to maintain going forward, because this field in total is about five hectares, so somewhere around 12 acres, 13 acres. And it's all, it's all like this. We normally make hay off it when it's not in a project. But long, nearly gone to seed quite stemmy and uh, the little ride on mower that Nick's going to be using to maintain this would have struggled with that so help him out knock it off once it'll be a lot easier for him going forward also frees up his time because he's on the harvester I keep calling it a harvester he's on the planter filling in because they they're a person short there's also a weather station gone in up here I'm not sure the company they put that in is but um, that was installed yesterday so we're here to get real-time weather from the field when they want to look at the plots remotely. There's been an awful lot of work in a very short amount of time that's gone into this. So all of these plots would have been sprayed off, cultivated, um, and then obviously worked and, and drilled. Where I'm stood now, this is going into trees. So this part's not actually getting cultivated. So this grass has been sprayed off um, last week. So this was last Friday, today is Wednesday. So you can see the, the spray's taken, it's all sort of starting to die off, go yellow. Um, and then yesterday I spent a fair amount of time up here spreading fertiliser. So we've got these little red bits, that is muria of potash. And then we've got these little white bits here, that is TSP, which is triple super phosphate. Just to get the soil indices right, they were very low in this field. Um, and because once it's all planted, we're not going to be able to get on it. Obviously because there'll be miscanthus, there'll be trees, and you won't be able to drive on it. We've got to boost the indices right up now before it all starts. I spread 418 kilos per hectare of MOP yesterday and 542 of TSP, um, which is only half of what the field actually needs, but we will be able to split treat it and put another lot on in the autumn, um, just because putting on a ton of hectare at once was uh, a bit much. Nick's quite excited about looking after it going forward. It's, Obviously something very different for you guys to see. How much we'll be up here looking at it going forward, I don't know, because it's one of those things, once the trees are up and out and the miscanthus is up and out, that'll look after itself, hopefully. It's only maintaining the areas around it. Obviously Nick will be showing a lot of people around. Um, the plot stuff up there will be a bit more interesting. Perhaps I'll just go and show you that in a second. I've just walked along to the other end of the field. So there's a, there's a big, massive L-shaped plot here that I'm stood in up past where John is, back over to where the hanner is, where the guys are planting over there. Now don't ask me why, because I know nothing about it. But this plot here, it was cultivated yesterday. That's going into Willow, but that's going to be fully submerged underground. So that had to be cultivated. This block here is also going into Willow. Whether it's a different variety or something, I don't know, but that's just going to be like a spike hammered into the ground and, uh, and pegged in. We got some trees that were planted here. There was a big effort by a lot of people um, a few weeks ago. So poplar, SRF poplar Veston, apparently that one. Um, they're going on down here. So I'm guessing these are all fairly similar. Are they just different? There's another breed of poplar or another variety, I should say. And then there's a Veston again. So. Uh, Got that going on. There's something different down the bottom. I'm not quite sure what that is. And then we got some smaller plot stuff here. So you can see, again, I think it's poplar trees, but uh, on a much smaller um, size at the moment. So I'll walk up through here and show you what's going on at the top. We've got more again with the pegs in the tubes. They've not had the easiest start to life because since they've been put in the ground, we've not had a speck of uh, rainfall. I was trying to find a bit of a peg to show you what they were, but 
I can't see one. Are you going to tell me on here what you are? No. But yeah, I'm assuming they're all poplars. Um, and they're all planted. So all the poplars are planted right up through. There's some pegs here. I can show you these ones. See, there's one. Look there. Ah, some more Veston. I guess they're all just put in the ground at different growth stages by the looks of it. It's been a manic couple of weeks. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed all the silage content. Um, it was a big old push to get all that done. It takes up a lot of time, obviously. Everyone knows. Starting to ease off a little bit. It's show season now, so I'll have already been to the Royal Cornwall by the time you guys see this. And uh, we might even be at the Highland Show when you're watching this. We're going up there, we're going to go and meet another Scottish YouTuber. Guess is in the comments who that might be. Hopefully you can see the forward leg making the groove. And there's rhizomes dropping down the soil too. And the gap, land drive wheel. Don't mark it. And following wheels. So I hope you guys have enjoyed seeing something a bit different with the uh, rhizome planting. I know it's not for everyone, there's no big machinery involved or whatever, but uh, it is what it is. It's something completely different. It's what sets us apart here from a lot of other farms doing things like this. So um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, it's completely free. I'll see you guys on another video very soon. Cheerio. Okay.